recording right now, by the I way? I am recording. <laughs> I am recording. So, yes, and this is this should be the easy part. My name is, you should know for a couple decades. <laughs> what do you do? You should know. No. Um, please, if you share this with the world, uh, let that be a blooper and not a look at this idiot. You know, there's different different ways to spin it. Okay, ready? Here we go. Hi, my name is Ted Coyne. I'm co-author of A World Gone Social, How Companies Must Adapt to Survive. I'm the CMO of Metal.it, and what I do for a living for fun is I give keynotes. That's what I do. Love speaking to an audience. What makes me future strong and what I think makes any leader future strong is optimism. Now, I've got optimism to a foolish degree. I will admit that. Um, some, some might say that I wasn't born with a good sense to realize what I'm doing, uh, you know, making a mistake. But the fact of the matter is that without infectious optimism, you're never going to lead anybody because there are times when no matter how polished the troops are, no matter how professionally experienced and mature, adult, everything else, they need a pick-me-up. Now, leaders also need a pick-me-up, and that's why you got to feed yourself with positivity also. You've got to insulate yourself, protect yourself, so that your mind can remain optimistic. I monitor my own attitude. I've been working on this for years to perfect it, and I'm still not there. But I make sure that I, uh, you know, okay, whoa, where, where am I going? I'm going down a rabbit hole of darkness. That's not going to be productive to anyone. I'm not one who's used just one single mentor in my career, but I pick people, and some of them may be people who don't know that they're my mentor. Like Richard Branson has been my mentor for, for life. Um, I love the guy. He has no idea who I am. Um, other people are professionals who help me, who give me advice. Surround yourself with people whose wisdom you can draw on when you need it whose positivity and experience you can draw on when you need it. And also, make sure that you have somebody close to you who will tell you when you're just wrong. There are times when you don't want to continue going down a path because that path has turned out to be a loser. You need someone to tell you that. Take small risks, which I learned the hard way. Ouch, never mind, this is a different story. You take small risks, and a lot of them, you will learn faster because of all the experiments you're doing. And when... Something fails, it's not the end of the world. It's, oh well, we learned. If it's successful, everyone's wanted, oh, good job, you know? If you fail, ask for forgiveness and move on. And the successful people I know within, the entrepreneurs I know within large companies, they do this all the time. Like, oh, this is what we have to do in order to get work done in our large bureaucratic organization. If you run a large company, there is no reason for you to fear your company failing in the future. However, observing the way many, many large companies are run, there's every reason to fear failing in the future. And the thing is, you know, in the industrial age, command and control worked. Even if it wasn't the best then either, there are, you know, successful companies, for instance, Gore and, um, and um, Valve was founded in the industrial age, um, Morningstar Tomatoes was found in the industrial age. These companies were more, you know, enlightened in their leadership, many more besides. But there, there were always companies that were successful not running by command and control industrial age principles. However, they were, you know, kind of odd and, and you didn't have to take them too seriously if you were a professional manager who loved command and control. Today, you really need to pay attention to companies that don't make uh, command and control necessary. Future strong companies are ones where the leaders enable the staff to use their brains, to use their entire brain. You know, they, they weigh about eight pounds. You don't want somebody coming in with only eight ounces. You want, <laughs> you want them to use the, the entire weight that's in our craniums. We enable our talented people to use their talents to explore what their creative uh, you know, genius is that we hired them for in the first place. And we enable them to do that, and we don't control them. We help them. It's a really difficult shift for a lot of people who want to be the boss. There are plenty of people. I was raised as an industrial age leader. And my early values as a kid growing up, like, I wanted to be the boss because the boss, you know, rank has its privileges. And I thought, that's pretty cool. You know, rank has its responsibilities. 
right? Should ever have its privileges. I mean, sure, somebody's uh, proven themselves, pay them more. That's fine. I mean, it's not antithetical to the way a modern business should run. But a modern leader, and my next book will probably be the modern CEO. A modern leader is one who doesn't need to command and control. Doesn't need to measure all the little things. Deming said back in the 1940s, he said the most important things are immeasurable and uh, sorry, uh, unmeasured and immeasurable. Okay, so this guy was the father of the lean movement. His his thoughts brought us. He was a statistician. His thoughts brought us to six sig sigma, unfortunately. But Deming. Um, even he, a statistician, said statistics aren't going to help you with the most important things in business. We are in the age of creativity, past knowledge work, and we need to allow our people to be creative. Bill, let me tell you an example that just drives me nuts. So I, I um, interviewed a lady, she's a vice president of a global corporation, and she, she said, you know, when I interview, this is my fifth enterprise that I've worked with, fifth, you know, global company. Every time I interview, they want to hire the smartest person they possibly can. As soon as I start working for one of these large companies, it's like my IQ has dropped 30 points. They don't trust me to do anything. And if that's how you're treating your top executives, your vice presidents, maybe your C-suiters, how are you treating the people on the front line? If we don't trust our employees to be mature, responsible adults, we're not going to be future strong. We're going to be future out of business.